Welcome back to the workshop, folks. I've got a little project I've been working on for a couple months, just when I could, but making an adapter plate and boring a bell housing to get a T5 Ford Mustang transmission onto a 1989 Volvo engine to put in a 1968 Volvo 122 Amazon. You might ask why, and I guess because I have a machine shop and I can do it, I'm going to try. Fortunately, my son had an adapter plate in a car he'd bought. I was going to buy one from the company, but they were out of stock. And so I thought, well, I can make one of my own. So I used the, the manufactured one as a template. Now, if you're not familiar with transmission adapters, transmissions and bell housings bolt together, but not all of them. They're usually made fairly specifically. Not all of them bolt to another one. And the bolt pattern on the T5, Borg Warner T5 that was came out of a Ford Mustang is a lot different than the bell housing on a uh, Volvo. That's uh, a B230. It's a 2.3 liter four cylinder turbocharged engine. And so I needed to be able to bolt the bell housing to the transmission because that bell housing is what bolts up to the back of the engine. So I needed to bore the center of the plate. There's a bearing retainer on the Borg Warner transmission. Uh, that has to fit into a recess and so that's the hole that's being I'm laying out right here to bore is for the uh, bearing retainer on the T5 transmission. So I cleaned up the four jaw chuck. Uh, wish I could get it apart a little more to clean it up but um, there's a couple things on it that are kind of messed up so it's kind of hard but I needed to put a couple spacers in so that um, when I was machining it the jaw the the jaws on the smaller axes wouldn't uh, axis wouldn't interfere with the cutting tool, so they just put a couple of aluminum spacers in and then tried to get the plate dialed in. I used the uh, live center in the tailstock, pointing at that uh, punch mark I'd made to try and get it close to center. And after I'd got it as close as I could by eyeball, I put a dead center between the live center and the center punch hole and dialed that in on the four jaw and then uh, dialed in the face to make sure I was cutting the uh, face I'm cutting is parallel to the back, the back face, the face that's up against the chuck. So I went back and forth a little bit getting the face running within a few thousands and then back to checking the dead center to make sure I hadn't misaligned the center. So after getting it, the center hole lined up I was able to uh, start drilling a hole so I could bore out the center bore and then I remembered I had a two inch rotor brooch. I thought that would be a little quicker than using lots of drills. Uh, the rotor brooches are pretty neat tools. If you haven't tried one you should look into them. For if you need to cut a hole they, they do a quick job of cutting holes as you can see. the uh, They got a lot of teeth and they make a lot of chips but end up with a nice bore. If I'd uh, not drilled it first, I'd, I would have had a nice little slug of aluminum to work on. So now it was back down to the boring bar, which was just as tedious as it looks to uh, bore that bore out. It's about a four inch bore and started with a two inch hole from the rotor brooch. Fortunately, uh, the tool was getting pretty good, pretty good chip control until I got out a little to the near the finished bore and you can see what kind of a bird nest I was getting from the chips. So after getting the bore out to the right dimension here, this is the boring the bearing housing that goes on the front of the Borg Warner transmission and that's what's got to clear that bore. This is my uh, Keystone cop routine. I obviously had a good fit because once I put it in, 
I couldn't get it out. And I was getting worried, then I remembered I do have a hole through the headstock. So a few whacks, a piece of tubing. I was able to get the, that bearing retainer back out. With the bearing cap, the center board out for the bearing cap, I needed to turn down a register that would fit in the bell housing to align the bell housing, center of the center of the bell housing on the transmission. There's about a, well, it's probably about an, on the, the one I was using as a template, about an eighth inch rim that's left as a register. I'm using a piece of three quarter inch plate, aluminum 6061, and taking about a quarter inch off, so I'll have a half inch uh, plate that the uh, bolts from the transmission and the bell housing will be able to go into. And again, the uh, tool I've got going on here, it's a, a DNMG style tools doing very nice chip control. Usually with aluminum I have a little more problem with the stringy chips, but I was getting real good chip breakage on with this tool. I thought this shot just kind of looked cool the way that aluminum was nice and shiny. So after getting it turned down to the right diameter on that register, I was ready to take it out and transfer the bolt pattern for the transmission and the bell housing onto it. Got a nice finish on the aluminum with that tool. In order to transfer the holes on the template I was using, I decided to make some transfer punches uh, using a Jacob Rubber Flex collet chuck here I picked up off of eBay. Um, usually they're pretty they're pretty expensive on eBay, but I found a pretty good deal on this one. It's it's a handy collet chuck. Uh, I have the set of handy collets, but there's a drawbar that goes through the spindle and having the being able to install and uninstall the collets right there at the spindle nose is really handy. Kind of give it a few knocks and then there's a locking ring that locks to keep it from coming undone while you're using it. Once I had the bolts in I just shaved them down to a point so I could transfer the bolt pattern on my template. The bolts for the bell housing side, the Volvo side, are metric and the, obviously the ones for the T5 are standard. So I made a transfer punch for each of those two bolts. Just turned down a nice sharp point and then gave them a little heat with a torch and dunked them in a can of oil to get them hard. They're kind of a one-time use tool so I didn't just want to spend too much time on them. And here's the finished hardened transfer punch. In order to transfer the holes, I had to line the two adapters up pretty carefully. I messed around with it a little bit and then thought I could maybe use the bearing housing itself and kind of dropped it through to make sure that that center hole was lined up on both of them. Just a quick note on why there's so many holes in the adapter plate. In the original car, the transmission, the engine is mounted vertically and in the later Volvos, starting with the 240 series, the Volvo, the engine was slanted to the side and so the adapter plate has all those holes in it so that either orientation can be used depending on, you know, where the car is going. It's not much, that much work to put a engine from a 1989 Volvo into a 1968 Volvo. There's not that many changes. The motor mounts are slightly different, but it's not, not too much difference. But the tilt of the engine is the difference that you had to turn them for the intakes to clear. So needed more holes. So in, the, in this case, we just thread the hardened transfer punch in, 
give it a tap with a hammer and that got me a nice mark for the to drill and tap the holes I marked them out carefully because I didn't want to they're different sizes and different thread threads so I wanted to make sure I got the right holes in the right place and while I had it together I went ahead and traced out the outline of the, the plate carefully you're just close up of uh, using a wiggler to find those center punch holes from the transfer punches and just work put it down in the hole if you've got it lined up just right when you lift up it won't wiggle as you can see it's wiggling a little bit so I move it, put it back down move the table a little bit pick it up and then I get very little movement which means you're pretty close to the center of the hole close enough for a this case because the holes in the transmission and the bell housing are clearance holes they've got the registers and the bearing assembly that help line everything up and get it concentric the bolts just kind of hold things together and a center drill and then a tapping uh, went through with the smaller drill and then the tap size and then just ran the tap down a little slower than I was drilling and one of the things I've not figured out with these keyless chucks is they do not like to back the tap out they just come off and can't seem to get it tight enough so I just backed them out with the tap handle you can see I got a little screw jack holding up the edge of the plate just so that it doesn't move any when the trying to drill it tap it and then I just gave me each a quick check with the bolt to make sure that worked I tried to lay it out on the rotary table on the milling machine in order to cut the profile but it was too complex I ended up just cutting it out on the bandsaw just the harbor freight bandsaw set it in vertical and then working it over with the belt sander and I got the adapter plate done in the next video I'll show you boring out the bell housing to fit get that, that register on the adapter plate and show you all the ways I managed to screw that up but in the end managed to get it get it together and get it to work. Thanks for watching and hope you enjoyed it.